How many quarterbacks do you think go tonight? What do you think? I think it's four. I think it's four. And, and I think that's only because I think there's a lot of good teams. You know, I think probably 27 or 28 teams have plans at quarterback, which is pretty pretty high considering how desperate a lot of – I mean, this is a league where Mike Glennon got $45 million a couple of years ago, right? And I think that um, once Jordan Love – once Herbert comes off the board, obviously probably in the top 10, Jordan Love's going to be dangling there. And I think – a team we're not thinking about who has a plan at quarterback who has a starter might say hey let's just let's just save for the future here um you know i've seen him mocked at green bay a handful of times are some really smart people a team like that who is set at quarterback who might want to stash it away uh for a rainy day and have a young quarterback and start the development process i think that's that's how that plays out i would guess four and then that would be love going where and when what do you think I'm going to agree with some of the smart people and say I would not be surprised if if Green Bay doesn't start planning. Really, I mean, Aaron Rodgers isn't close to well, forty. I mean, he's in his mid thirties. I mean, I, I agree with you. I, I he's not close you. to I, I done. I mean, that, organization. That means you're going to. That means you're going to Aaron Rodgers, Jordan Love, is basically it. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's that's the circle of life. I yeah, I, <laughs> I understand what the circle of life is, Kevin. <laughs> but I mean. The, the, it, and I understand that football is so crazy that, yes, that Aaron Rodgers, end of his Packers career, he could be in the role of Favre, and then somebody is in the role of Aaron Rodgers. But that makes no sense to me for a team that has not. This is what one fact, Chris, that I don't know if you saw on the mock draft last night with Daniel Jeremiah. The last time the Packers chose an offensive player in the first round told Aaron Rodgers here here's some help on offense with a first rounder was the year after they won the Super Bowl with him and they chose an offensive lineman whose name escapes me now from Mississippi State who played four years in the league and they've gone defense first round every year since then so you're telling me they will finally add an offensive player through the first round but it's the guy to replace Aaron Rodgers I mean, I think it's within the realm of possibility. I mean, listen, right. one of the, the Packers are really into athleticism and draft and, and, and drafting um, really good athletes. And I think that that's part of the reasons they've always gone. They've gone with a lot of cornerbacks, a lot of defensive linemen, that sort of thing. They, they like to, to, to draft those kind of athletes in the first round. Uh, that was true of Ted Thompson. It's now true of Brian Gutenkunst. And I think that. I just think that there's a possibility we see a curveball like that. Um, am I 100%? You know, Daniel Jeremiah was the first person to sort of throw this out there that, that love could be a, a possibility for a team like the Packers. I, I just think that when you're a smart organization, and I think the Packers are, you understand the value of having a, a quarterback uh, plant and a quarterback pipeline. They're paying Aaron Rodgers a lot of money, a lot of money. Historically high money. I think he made, what, $66 million in, in cash in one year, two years ago. Um, and, and they're committed to him. But I think that, you know, I remember something Jeffrey Lurie said to me once where they don't, in the, in the Eagles facility, they don't even call it the backup quarterback. They call it the second quarterback yeah. because he's always going to play. And and that's something that, you know, Nick Foles, you know, revealed that. Just, Bowl. But I feel like having a plan for a smart team is always a good thing. I hear you. And I guess we might find out what the Saints' tr- uh, ultimate evaluation of Taysom Hill is if, if they pass on Jordan Love tonight uh, and he's still sitting out there in the 20s. You know, and and Jordan's uh, on my show. He's the next guest on this show, Kevin. You ask interesting questions for a living. What would you want to know from Jordan Love? Wow. Um, I mean, I I would want to know, and this is you know completely, I whether or not he would answer this is a separate thing. But I, I'm I'm really intrigued to see what he thinks about this off season and whether or not what the realistic goals are considering there's going to be no rookie minicamp considering there's going to probably be no uh, veteran minicamp in June and there might not be a training camp uh, that, that, that we're used to that starts on, you know, he's reporting July 24th and all that. And I think that that's going to change a lot for rookies. And remember this happened in 2011 with uh, the lockout where there's no off season and everyone said, well, the rookie class is screwed. Well, then Cam Newton comes out and has this has a historically good year. JJ Watt, AJ Green, Julio Jones, all those guys came in that year and everything was fine. But for a guy who needs a little more development like Jordan Love, who would come into a system and try to learn it and try to get on the same page, does this put him a little bit behind the eight ball? Because I can't help but think it does. And I think that's also part of the reason we might see a, a team with a, a quarterback plan 
uh, go with a guy like Jordan Love because it's going to take an extra year maybe to work him into the system uh, with, with the way this offseason is going to go. All right. Uh, Kevin Clark of the Ringer here on the Rich Eisen Show. A few more minutes left with him and uh, helping me do my job, make it easier for me later <laughs> on in the show. I mean, that will be an interesting question to ask him for sure. Um, and then there's the comparisons to Mahomes that everybody keeps throwing yeah. out there. We're going to talk about unfair. I don't know what's more unfair, Burrow is the next Brady or Love is the next Mahomes. I don't know what's more unfair, but I've heard both of those evaluations. You know? Yeah, and it's funny. Because Mahomes was such a unique prospect, and scouts missed on him for so many different reasons. One of them is he was so competitive that he was throwing. You know, he felt he had to score 70 points every game, which he kind of did at Texas Tech. And so he was making some maybe more competitive passes than he should have, maybe some more 50-50 balls than he should have. But I think that because he was – Mahomes was kind of a flawed prospect in some ways. And because of that, more people are going to compare him, get compared to Mahomes than probably should. I mean, it almost reminds me a little bit of Brett Favre when he was in his prime, Rich, where because he was – he was not perfect on every throw. Everybody coming out of college got compared to Brett Favre. It was actually kind of funny, and I think that's, that's probably going to happen with Mahomes a little bit because of the way he was as a prospect. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.